we are here at the Rebellious Media Conference in London. We are seated in our pop-up studio in the garden, and we are talking to Julio Sika about New York and the, uh, the current movement that has now come to London. Hi. Well, it's coming to London. <laughs> it's going to be over the next two weeks. And, um, well, it's been really interesting, this conference, the Rebellious Media Conference. I have to say, for my part, as much as I've followed Noam Chomsky's work over many years and think he's spoken eloquently and brilliantly about um, radical movements throughout the world I think from what I heard him speak that he hasn't quite in my opinion sensed what the mood of, of the Occupy New York movement is about I asked a specific question to him which he, an he answered about the amorphous nature of the movement what seems to be anger angering the mainstream media or upsetting them or confusing them is the fact that no, there's no specific demand as one whole. That makes it very difficult for the media to suppress the dissent. The media over many years has used its tactic in many different ways of finding one focal point, either a leader or a group, and over a period of weeks and months undermining, attacking the character of that person and group and undermining the message. They aren't able to do that with this movement. This movement is growing very slowly. It's almost, although there are specific political demands around it, it's almost apolitical. It's simply a presence that's growing, speaking against the banks, is speaking against the injustice. Um, Naomi Klein has spoken eloquently about this, Douglas Rushkoff, I think, also. And I feel that since it is about, in a very general sense, about the banks, as it comes to London, which it will do beginning this weekend, but specifically the Stock Exchange is going to be occupied, or the area around the Stock Exchange around October the 15th, we'll see how that will develop here. I'd like to think this is a long-term presence, not because I want to you know, see specific revolution, but I do think that we need to address how the banking system has become so concentrated in terms of financial instruments, in terms of creating money out of thin air, that this is completely unsustainable. Everyone knows it, no one's speaking about it. We can't attack it directly, specifically at the moment. We need to build a presence. And what's happened in New York is building and hopefully this will happen in London. So you say that it's, instead of being a one-time big event, it's more slow-growing, self-strengthening process. Where do you see this is going, let's say, well, how would this? Uh, how could we look back on this, for example, in half a year? How would we look on that? Looking back half a year or looking forward? Half a year. How, looking forward. Looking forward. I can't predict the future. What I would say is that the, this movement has roots. You can stretch right back to the 60s. Um, obviously, the anti-Vietnam movements in, in America. Uh, but specifically, I think that the, the, the recent history are the anti-global movements of 98, 97, 98, 99, Seattle, Prague and Genoa. Those movements are growing specifically against capitalism and its growing power in the financial markets. Uh, it was cut short very severely by the events of 9-11. It, it managed to, in, in many respects, transfer itself into an anti-war movement. That was specifically against the war, but there was an underlying critique of capitalism saying that these wars are being conducted because to feed a capitalist system that needs to create cheap labour around the world in order to sustain itself. Why is this happening now, not ex for example in 2008, if it's about capitalism? Well, there was, a, there was a shock in 2008. The markets were depressed. Many of those commentators over the past 10 years had been saying it was going to happen. They were proved right. But the mainstream media couldn't acknowledge that straight away. There was a beginning to acknowledge it. And then events started to take over, I suppose, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And what we've had, I think, is a, a rebound effect of the Arab Spring. A, 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 a positive example of how uh, new media, I think new media has a lot to say in how this is being spread. Um, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And so the Arab Spring, the, the uprising, there's a sense, I think there's direct, also direct um, connection with the Occupy Tel Aviv movements. So we're moving from an Arab Spring to an English fall then? Possibly, yeah. Not just an English fall and an American fall, but I think this is now a world movement. 
It can't be acknowledged as such. There are no specific political demands, I don't think. I think there are many political demands, and we're finding that in this conference. Many competing ideas, some directly opposed to each other in many ways, but what it is is a, is a people presence. And uh, it's happening in Tel Aviv, and many people have criticised Tel Aviv movement for not... Uh, speaking directly against the Palestinian occupation. Well, of course that's there, but they cannot be that overt because it would be crushed and suppressed in the same way this is happening here. Um, with that, we round out of our interview. We had Julio Sika, freelance uh, journalist, and we are still at the Rebellious Media Conference in London. Thank you very much.